everybody, QuestWise here, and today I decided to do another video. Um, it wasn't a request, but I felt uh, compelled to create a video uh, today about something that uh, somebody asked me about today. So uh, earlier today, I left the house for a little bit, and I drove down to the, to the Circle K gas station, which is just on the road from my house. Uh, I needed to get some gas and a few other supplies and something to drink. And uh, while I was there, the cashier said to me, I really appreciate and like your decals on the back of your truck. Of course, my truck uh, is kind of my place to show off my my nerddom, my nerdery. And, um, and as such, on the back of that, I do have a large... Um, D, D ampersand uh, sticker and they proceeded to ask me do you are you a player or do you are, are you a dungeon master do you do you run the game and I said well usually by default if I want to put together a game if I want to um, get a group together I, I usually end up by default being the the dungeon master uh, running the game itself and I said but if I want to play um, in what free time I might have, um, I tend to uh, run solo role-playing sessions for myself, so I get the chance to play a character uh, in a sort of player role um, by myself. And they curiously asked, uh, I'm, very curi I'm, I'm very interested in that aspect of solo role-playing, but I can't seem to find any sort of definitive answer on how to do it. I'm assuming um, in the short period of interaction that we had together at the cash register that they play Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. That was an assumption I made. I think at the current um, state of gaming in the world right now, that's a pretty good assumption. Uh, if they liked my uh, ampersand on my truck. Um, and so I felt a little bit compelled to come home and make this video for all of you, but in particular for uh, that cashier at my local Circle K, uh, because I, I, I'm very blessed to live in a town, a moderate sized town in Northern Michigan um, that has six gaming venues located within its borders. And I, I find that very fascinating because there, there are times when you go to larger you know, larger cities, um, and uh, and they only have maybe one or two game stores or game venues. Um, sometimes it'll be a game store where they don't even have a place to play, just to buy stuff. Uh, nearly every single one of the stores in my local area has a venue in which you can sit down and play games as well. Be it card games like Magic the Gathering or Marvel Champions or uh, Pokemon, or whatever you choose to, things like Warhammer and Dungeons and & Dragons. So today I wanted to touch a little bit on a very simple way to solo roleplay a session to get a feel for it. Now there are many, many other ways out there. There are uh, GM emulators or DM emulators out there. Uh, you can find those simply by going to Drive Through RPG and looking up Game Master emulators or Dungeon Master emulators. There's a lot of really good ones out there. Um, and I've talked about several of those in past videos. But today I want to talk a little bit about how how I sort of stepped into solo role-playing for myself. Now, when I first was introduced to Dungeons & Dragons, it was back in the early 90s. And, um, you know, at a time when it was not... It was not kosher to sort of talk about the fact that you played Dungeons and Dragons. And so you had to have the sort of secret handshake, as it were, in order to find out other people who played. And it took a little while. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I was very interested in, in role playing, fantasy gaming, and, and that aspect of things. So at my local Walden Books, if anybody remembers Walden Books, uh, I picked up the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 2nd Edition Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and Monster Manual, uh, which at the time was a big three-ring binder of loose sheets that you could buy, uh, later to become incorporated into the sort of Monster Manual that we all know and love today. Uh, but I had to sort of teach myself the game, because I didn't really have anybody in my local area that I knew 
uh, who played uh, at the time. So I began solo role playing uh, very early on, and um, it's not a bad thing. In fact, I felt like uh, I enjoyed the hobby very much. And so when we, you know, we had the pandemic hit a couple of years back, um, everybody was isolated and quarantined. Um, it was nice to be able to fall back on those ideas that I had when I was very young in order to keep myself entertained and to further my love of the hobby. So today I'm just going to share a simple way that I, during the pandemic, began to solo roleplay before emulators became a big thing. Um, I, was, I would say during the pandemic, they really took off because people wanted to play. You could play via Zoom, but you also had aspects where you were sort of, uh, if you didn't know anybody uh, who, who could do those resources or whatever, uh, you began to play in a solo fashion. And this is how I started to do those things. And this is a very basic way to do a solo role-playing session. And it's a great way that when you can't get together with a group that you can sort of explore and, and enjoy the hobby that you love. I would highly recommend going out and getting a copy of this. This is the Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition Essentials Kit. Now I know at the time of the filming of this, uh, at some point in, in the future, um, uh, in 2024, we will be getting a new a, a new version of Dungeons & Dragons. I'm not really calling it a new edition, um, because from what I've read so far, it will be backwards compatible with 5th edition. So uh, I, I, I kind of, there, there's no been no mention of really calling it a new edition. It's not 6th edition, it's just a, a new version of D&D. Um, I think cleaned up, probably encapsulating some new ideas and whatnot. Uh, but I think for the most part, it's going to be just an extension of the game that we already know and love. Uh, so I believe that you can still find this. If you can't find this uh, at your local uh, uh, stores, I think I picked this up at Target. Um, but if you can't find this at a local store, you can find it on Amazon for fairly cheap. It, it wasn't very much to begin with. But this is the Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition Essentials Kit. And the reason I say this is because there's a beginner's kit as well, too. Um, and while that's cool and all, it's very much for beginners who want to jump into the game. Essentials Kit, I think, is something that's very unique in that it gives you the ability to create your own characters, uh, where the beginner's kit does not. And it adds something to uh, the fact uh, of helping you play in a solo fashion. So the Essentials Kit, uh, and what, what, what comes in it is you're going to get a rule book that shows you the basics of the rules. It doesn't go into full detail in the rules, but it gives you enough um, a detail that you can get started right away. Uh, if you have a player's handbook already, that's great. Use the full rules. Use as much as you want. And that's the thing about solo role-playing is that you're playing to enjoy yourself. So if there are rules that you need to, to change or you need to break or you need to, um, you know, a house rule in order to enjoy the game, then do so because, and, and you'll see this in my past videos, role playing is about the experience. It's about a shared storytelling aspect. And if you're solo role playing, you're sort of creating that story for yourself. So do whatever it takes to make you uh, happy and whatever it takes to make a, a an, ex, an enjoyable experience for you. One of the things I found that was really neat in this box is a, a map of the Sword Coast that has hexes on it. And I was using just a small colored cube from one of the board games I had to mark where I was at on the map. Um, and, uh, you know, I was using this as sort of my uh, idea to, as to where I was at in the world. Uh, if you're going to play, you know, Forgotten Realms, if you have other maps, you can use those as well. But this is specifically Forgotten Realms, but uh, generic enough that you can make it anything that you really, really want. What's really great about this box set is that you get a bunch of cards inside the box set, including the sidekick cards. And what's really great about these is that while you have a sort of... Um, a, a picture of the, the, the sidekick itself. On the back, it gives you ideas of what the sidekick can do. So this, in particular, uh, is Nib, a Lightfoot Halfling Spellcaster. 
It tells you their personality traits, their ideals, their bonds, their flaws, uh, and gives you a little idea of, of who they are. And then what I did is I created my own character, uh, and I started at first level, um, and then I created a small sidekick as well, too, uh, I, on, a, on a short piece of paper. I didn't even use a character sheet for this. I just made a sort of generic little character based upon the the aspects that were on the back of this card. And this is somebody that's it's simply going to follow you around. It's almost like an extra character that you're going to be playing, um, but not into full detail like your character. The other thing that this deck comes with and I thought was really interesting and really helped to sort of bring um, the solo aspect role playing to, to bear was these quest cards. Um, and these are small cards that on the back of them, this one says Dragon Barrel Quest. I get the glare off of this. The Dragon Barrel Quest, and it gives you a little bit of an idea. This one says, the dragon that beset us is not the first to threaten this region. Between here and Neverwinter lies the barrel mound of a warrior whose magical dragon-slaying sword helped fell a green dragon terrorize in the high road a century ago. Uh, rumor has it that the dragon slayer sword is buried there. To retrieve it, uh, or retrieve it and let the sword be its own reward. So a small quest card, and this is what I, and there's, there's several of them in here, and I just shuffled them up and randomly drew one, and this became my quest for my solo adventure. Uh, there's, in, in here, in, there's also magic item cards as well, too. Uh, one of them is the dragon slaying sword. Uh, there are also things in here like potions of healing. Uh, cloak of billowing, uh, plus one battle axe, dust of disappearance. Here's the dragon slayer sword. So this was the ultimate goal of my quest. This is the thing that I was going to try and find. Uh, but while I was on my way there, I would stop at different locations um, on the map uh, if I found some stuff. And I would roll randomly. And I, I would just sort of make this stuff up as I would go. I would say... Um, you know, I've traveled, I would say each hex would be a half of a day's journey. And at the end of two traveling hexes, uh, I would have to sort of camp for the night. Um, and if I did so, I would use rations if it was just in a, in a wilderness area. And then I would look in, in some of the, the, uh, the monsters that are included in the box set and say, okay, what's what's most common? I mean, like thinking first level, like goblins, kobolds, um, giant spiders, that kind of an idea. And then I would roll and I would say, like, I would take like a D6, uh, a six-sided die and just be like, okay, one, two, three, um, you know, depending on the area I was in, say, I'm in the forest. Well, it's a, it's a higher possibility that I'll probably run into some goblins or I'd run into some giant spiders. And I would say, okay, so on a one, two, uh, I encounter nothing and my, my night goes peacefully. Uh, I have to expend some rations in order to eat. I, I create a fire uh, on, a, on a three, four, five, or six. I'm going to encounter X amount of goblins. And then I would roll a D6 or, or, or an X amount of giant spiders. And I would roll a D6 and it would tell me, you know, I'd say D6 minus one. Uh, just off the top of my head, just kind of how I felt that the adventure should go, uh, and I would encounter that many giant spiders, uh, and would try to fight them off. Um, if it were goblins, I could say, hey, there's, you know, um, on, a, on a four or five or six, there's their sort of encampment nearby. Uh, if that was, if I rolled a four or five or six, I would go to the encampment after I had defeated them, and I would roll again uh, randomly to see if I found um, any any treasure. And it, that treasure could be anything from gold to a magic item. And, and again, I would do this all randomly. And I would just make it up as I go. And that's the great thing about solo role playing is it because you're playing for yourself. You're telling your own story. So don't be afraid to let your imagination run wild. You know, so saying things like I would be like in the goblin camp and I would say, um, uh, on a one or two, I don't really find anything of any use. On a three, four, or five, I would find some gold, maybe a few more rations. Uh, on a six, I would find a magic weapon. And then I would take this deck of cards that say magic item, and I would shuffle them up, and I would randomly draw one. I would take the Dragon Slayer sword out, obviously, because it told me in the quest card where that should be found um, on a barrow near Neverwinter. 
And so I would take that card out and then I would just receive, if I rolled a six, the magic item it might be a plus one shield, it might be um, a potion of healing, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and that's what I would receive as sort of my um, mini adventure uh, encounter in that, in that region. And then I would move on and simply try to find, my goal was to find the Dragon Slayer Sword. And that was the end of that adventure. I had completed the goals of that quest. I had found the Dragon Slaying Sword, and that was my reward for that particular scenario. If I wanted to press on a little bit further, I would, you know, it, it, I would gain experience for the things that I found. I would gain experience for completing the quest uh, based upon what I thought was fair. Um, I would gain experience upon the the uh, encounters I had and the creatures that I defeated. And at that point, I could then possibly level up. Um, there's also this idea, this kind of idea of sort of of, of milestone in, uh, of, of leveling up, of, of that idea of once you reach a certain goal that you automatically level up. You can totally do that, too. It talks about that in the Player's Handbook and the Dungeon Master's Guide, I believe, as well. So if you have those, there's that idea of, of rather than gathering experience and going up in a level that you would actually, once you receive the dragon slaying sword, uh, you would automatically go to level two and, and you'd get all the benefits of being level two. And, you know, the next story I would say, okay, well, maybe I'm not ready to face this dragon or maybe it's not even an adult green dragon. Maybe it's a, a, a wormling green dragon, right? It's a small green dragon. Um, so maybe, maybe by level three, I could encounter that. And then maybe I would go to Neverwinter and try to gather um, information. And I would gather clues as to where I could find this green dragon and why it was terrorizing the people. Um, and, and, then, and then your imagination kind of grows from there, right? So do I need to defeat the green dragon or do I can I interact with it? We all know that in Dungeons & Dragons, uh, most dragons are intelligent creatures. So could I talk to the dragon and simply find out if you know what it needed to leave the area what it was that it was seeking what it, what its, its desires and its personal goals were and 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 simply grow the adventure from there so i guess the main gist of this entire thing is if you're solo role playing just let your imagination take take control um do what you think is fair and you know based upon the rules that you have but don't be afraid to bend rules don't be afraid to break rules don't be afraid to house rule stuff in order to further your enjoyment of the game. Uh, that's, I think, a goal is that you're, you're simply telling a story and, and you're using dice to sort of mitigate those, those, those areas where, um, you know, fate should decide things. And so things like attack rolls and things like um, searching for things and roles in which uh, you're trying to disarm a trap, uh, that type of idea. I also highly recommend not only just using the map with hexes, but once you get to an encounter, once you get to, to a location where you're fighting stuff, if you have miniatures, set them up on a table. And it doesn't need to be anything elaborate. It doesn't need to be anything with like a neoprene mat. It doesn't need to have lots of terrain. Um, you know, when I first started way back in the day, I had hills that were made out of books that were on my shelf. Um, I had... Um, uh, dungeons that were carved out of cardboard and foam, uh, foam core boards and stuff, um, like like uh, insulation foam. I had carved those out. I'd paint them gray real quick, uh, and those would be rock, rocky outcroppings or tunnels through a uh, um, uh, through a dungeon. So it doesn't need to be super fancy, but it's fun to sort of be able to to envision where you're at. Uh, in a scenario. So by using miniatures, it's a, it's a great way to sort of uh, to help you with your imagination and to grow those ideas of where you might be on the battlefield at any given time and sort of helps your imagination sort of expand itself a little bit, if, if that makes sense, to to give you a perspective of what you're doing and where you're at on the battlefield, as opposed to just rolling dice and saying, I hit, I miss, I take damage, I give damage, whatever. Um, 
So it's it's a great way of doing things. And there's tons of ways out there. You know, WizKids offers uh, pre-painted miniatures. They offer miniatures if you like to paint, which I love to paint. If you've watched some of my videos in the past, you know, or follow me at all uh, on social media, you know that I love to paint figures. But there's also like flat miniatures out there now. They're plastic. Uh, I don't actually even own any of them, but they're really, really cool. They're sort of like um, uh, clear plastic acrylic with a with an image printed on them uh, that sit onto a little stand. Um, they're flat, uh, but it gives you a perspective of a, of a figure of your character uh, uh, engaging on a battlefield with enemies. I... If you, if you want to know more about solo role-playing, please go back in the catalog of my videos. There are, are, are several of them where I talk about, especially during the 2020-2021 era of the pandemic, uh, where I talk about solo role-playing and how I've sort of further delved uh, into that and some of the products that I've purchased or have been given to me uh, in order to, to, to further my enjoyment of, of playing solo. Um, but until next time... I'm Questoys. My friends, please stay safe out there, whatever it is that you're doing. And as always, game on. If you followed the video this far, please check out our sponsor for this video, Hexwood Creations. They create some amazing handcrafted wooden dice boxes and play aids. Uh, check out their link in the description down below. Uh, you will not be sorry. Uh, great, great company, great dude that makes these items. Please go check out their stuff right now. Uh, you won't be sorry.